Hey everyone, it's Colin, and I'm back with a new project, a cheap and portable track timer for under $100. With the track and field season rapidly approaching, I needed a system that met three goals. One, it had to be quick and easy to set up and not take much room on the track. Second, it had to act similarly to a real race, and therefore had to have a start tone and a random start delay. And number three, it had to be as cheap as possible, with a goal of under $100. The idea with the track timer is simple. There are two modules, one sitting at the start of the track, and the other one at the end. With the user selected delay, the start module plays the start tone and starts the stopwatch. When an athlete crosses the finish line, a light beam is crossed, and the finish module sends a signal to the start module to stop the timer. The athlete's time then is displayed on the screen, thus acting as an automatic stopwatch. It's great for timing by yourself or timing an entire team. Here's the entire system. Yep, it's only two small 3D printed boxes. One of these is the start module here, and the other one is the finish module. The modules are wireless, meaning that they should work together anywhere on the track. Let's pay attention to the start module for now. Now the start module is the control center of the system. It has a small OLED screen, like always, and three buttons for a simple menu system. The display allows you to select which mode you want to use, along with other settings that are useful. I'll go over these soon. There's a power switch on the side, along with the battery cover and speaker grill on the bottom of the device. On the far side, there's also an antenna and USB port, allowing easy software updates without having to disassemble the entire device. The USB port also allows you to connect the track timer to a computer and write times directly to the computer. The finish module is even simpler. It too has a power button on the side along with the USB port, an antenna on the back, and a battery cover on the bottom. The top has two LEDs, the red one indicating power, and the green one indicating that the system is ready. However, if you move your attention over to the far side of the module, you'll notice a camera-like sensor. Now this isn't actually a camera, instead it's a LiDAR sensor, standing for Light Detection and Ranging. Like the name suggests, this sensor detects the range of an object by using light. It's the same technology that some self-driving cars use. With all the descriptions and fancy explanations done, I'll now show me using it. Back to the track. Well, here I am at my school track, and as you can tell, there are many different lanes. Now, if we have someone running in lane 2, we wouldn't want someone in lane 1 accidentally crossing the sensor and setting it up. So, by detecting the distance between the person and knowing the distance of the lanes, we can figure out which one was crossed. That's how detection works on my system. Now before I go on to parts and other nerdy stuff, I'm going to show you the menu on the system. Let's go back to the start module. On the home screen, there are four options, sprint, lap, counter, and settings. Sprint is for timing a singular person, as it stops the timer once the light beam is crossed. Lap mode is similar, however instead of stopping when the beam is crossed, it stops at the fourth cross, giving you an average for all your laps, along with individual lap times and the entire time put together. Counter mode is made for running in groups. It shows the current time, the time of the last person who crossed the finish module, the lane that is being measured, and the number of runners that have crossed the finish module. Now, for both sprint and that mode, there are two options before going into that selected mode. The first is automatic mode, which plays a ready tone, then a set tone, and then finally a start tone. The tones have a randomized delay, making it good for practicing starts. The other option is manual mode, which plays a tone when the OK button is pressed. Counter mode only has manual mode, as it is meant for a coach or other person to operate and handle. Now back to the menu system. The final option here is settings. There are three settings that you can customize. The first one, distance, allows you to choose which lane you want to detect. The second option allows you to enable or disable the speaker on the start of the module. This is useful for coaches who want to call out start by themselves, or athletes that just want to be quieter. The third and final option calibrates the sensor to the ambient light, along with ignoring any background objects that may be present when calibration begins. That's an entire in-depth tour of the track timer. Now if you're planning to build one yourself or just curious how I built it, here's a part list. The parts for this project come out to about $90, about half of that being for the lighter module, which is just under $40. However, for a system like this, $90 is miles cheaper than other systems. Now here's the part list. To power the system, I use an Arduino Nano and an Arduino Uno. However, two Arduino Nanos work just fine. To play the start tone, I use a 4 ohm 3 watt speaker, along with the LM386 amplifier to increase the volume of the tones. For the display, I of course opted in for a 1.3 inch OLED screen. To send and receive data, I use two NRF24 L01 modules with antenna, as they have incredible range and very low latency. To measure when someone crosses the finish line, I use the TF Mini S, lighter sensor 
that I found off of Amazon. The reason I chose this sensor was because of its 12 meter range, meaning that it can cover an entire track width. It's also very reliable, and I have yet to encounter any problems with it. Now everything is powered by two 9 volt batteries, one in each module. And besides a few push buttons, toggle switches, LEDs, and 3D printed parts, that's it. With all the descriptions and fancy explanations done, I'll now show me using it. Back to the track! often in California. Rain! Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. All parts, links, schematics, and files will be down in the description below. Thanks for sticking to the end, and see you next time.